Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to work on the sculpture part of our ocarina. In the past, we've looked at this ocarina um, of a little bird. Um, and you can kind of see I've added on the head here, and I've added on the wings here, um, and the mouthpieces back here. Likewise, we've, we've looked at this one. It's a big fish. Um, it's got, you know, big uh, fins right on the side. It's got a big fin at the top and a big fin at the back. And so I've added all that extra clay on. Today, the idea is to make your sculpture what it's going to be. We have the basic ocarina body. You have your four holes, um, pitch holes from last time. Your ocarina should work. And today, we're just going to sculpt. I'm going to make my fantasy creature. I'm going to put a head out this way to kind of make like a dragon head on it. And then I'm going to put like um, a tail out this way. And I'm going to add some legs onto the side so that we are actually sculpting. The things you're going to need for sculpting, you're going to need a couple popsicle sticks, maybe some other tools that are in your toolbox. You're going to need slip to add um, onto your clay to put two pieces together. And then you'll need some extra chunks of clay um, to do the actual adding. So first of all, I'm going to decide where I want my head. I want my head to be coming kind of right off this back piece and I'm going to have it curving up to make like a dragon head. So I'm actually going to take right here, I'm going to use the corner of my popsicle stick to put some score marks on. Scoring allows the slip to get into the clay um, so that you can have the clay actually sticking um, to two pieces. So here's the score marks and I'm just going to get some clay slip here. The slip is just watered down clay and it should be kind of gooey and sticky and the idea is you're using it kind of like glue. So I'm just going to let that sit there um, and put that on there. Okay, we'll let that sit. And then we're going to get some extra clay. Um, this clay here, I'm going to use this blob to kind of sculpt it into the um, head. So you can kind of see if I put it on this way, like this, I want the head to kind of bend out. So I'm going to take this bottom piece right here and I'm just going to squish it together. And part of sculpting is um, making the form look correct and form is a three-dimensional shape so you have to make the shape look right and by looking right it has to look good from all sides right because it's a sculpture now your drawings that you made for class I'm going to put some slip on here too um, your drawings that you made for class as homework those should be those should serve as your guide of course they're drawings so they're two-dimensional so they're not going to work as good as you know a three-dimensional model but the point is right now you're going to make that three-dimensional model now to get this clay to stick together I'm just going to kind of twist it back and forth as I gently push remember you don't want to push too much because you don't want to disturb any of the mouthpiece um, and get that all screwed up and then have to work on the mouthpiece again. But so here you go, you can see kind of how I've added that clay on there. And you can see the, the um, slip kind of squishing out the sides, which is exactly what we want. We want it to be squishing out and making a good bond. Now I want this kind of in the middle. Good, so there the head's kind of in the middle. And here's the head out this way. And then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm actually going to squish the big chunk of clay onto the body of my ocarina basic shape to kind of get the two pieces really well attached. Okay, now as I work this with my fingers, I'm being very careful with my left hand here uh, to hold the ocarina so it doesn't get too messed up. You don't want the body of the ocarina to get too messed up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of just smushing this a little more and kind of easing it into a more smooth shape so it's not as bumpy. The thing with sculpting is you want to work slowly so the clay can have a chance to move and set into the right position. Uh, but you want to be able to really pinch it and work it as well so that it has the shape you want it to. So there I've kind of got the neck shape how I want it. it. Looks pretty good from this side. There's not too many bumps or wiggly lines. Okay, and it looks good from this side. The idea with sculpture is you have to keep kind of turning it around to see what is looking good and what's not. Like this back piece right here, there's that little crack there, so I'm going to take a little chunk of clay, just like you would with Play-Doh, and roll it in my hands and squish it into there so we can make that a little bit more rounded too. Okay, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to blend those two seams together, blending back and forth with my thumb and my fingers. If you want to, you can use a popsicle stick because that'll make it nice and smooth. And then I want my my dragon's neck to be thin. I want it to be about that thin, um, looking from the back. And I want it to be about that thin from the front, 
but the, the middle part's really thick. So I'm just going to kind of keep pushing and pinching. And you can see how I kind of move the clay with my fingers as I pinch it. I pinch it up and away from the main body shape. And notice that I'm keeping turning the body shape to get that looking right. So there I've got kind of more of a, a tall neck looking piece. All right. I'm going to just kind of smooth it down and make sure that as I'm working, I'm smoothing the shapes and um, turning them correctly so that your uh, ocarina fantasy creature looks good from all sides. So there's kind of my basic neck shape. Now I want to take the head and I'm actually going to add another little ball of clay on for the head. I'm just going to kind of shape it into an ovally type shape and I'm going to put it kind of like right about here on there so it looks like the head. I'm going to kind of attach it. So again with my scoring and slipping you're going to want to score the area where you want the two pieces to come together. Then you want to get some of the slip and put a little layer of slip on and then attach those two pieces together. Okay. Now, one of the things about clay is as you work with clay, you have to be careful you don't get one spot too heavy and another spot too thin because if you have it, you just have to be careful of the weight. You know, this neck here is getting pretty thin for this big, heavy, bulky head that I just put on here. So I'm actually going to tilt it just a little bit back like that so that it doesn't get too out of, out of uh, balance. And now I'm just going to take this and I want some little like cresting, like, um, uh, what do you call those things? Scales or armor on the back, kind of like a stegosaurus or something, like a big um, dinosaur-like shape. So I want to have those sticking up. So his neck is here, his head is here. I'm going to kind of pinch it down like this. I'm going to pinch up a little bit of clay here for a horn. All right, and then here for the mouth, I'm actually going to take my popsicle stick and I'm just going to kind of cut a mouth shape through. So you can kind of see if I turn this around, you can see the mouth goes all the way through and the horn goes all the way around. And now I'm going to kind of thin the bottom lip out a little bit so it looks like it's more pointy. And you can just kind of see how I'm gently sculpting it as I go. Being careful not to, you know, pull too hard or push too hard. And I'm really trying to work all parts of the clay all at once. So it doesn't turn into a thing where I'm just squishing and pinching and working one area of the clay. So here's my dragon neck and dragon head okay and you can kind of see how that's been sculpted and shaped um, I'm going to just keep working it Mr. Lundgren you can kind of fast forward as I finish the head Okay, so if I look here, 
You can kind of see I've made these like four horns. I've made this horn and I'll kind of keep working on it. I'm going to make a little area for the eyes right in here, um, but we're going to do that next week. Um, and I'm going to kind of tilt this head back and actually thin it out and bend the head down just a bit so it's got more of an like S curve to it like that. Okay, so I would say that that kind of completes the main body part of the head. All right, then for the side, for the feet here, I'm just going to set him down. For the feet, I want to add some, some uh, little feet right in here that he's kind of sitting on and crouching on. Um, so again, I'm going to actually get this whole side of his body um, wet with slip. I'm going to crisscross my lines, put some slip on. And we're going to kind of sculpt as we go. I'll do this side first, and then I'll do the other side. I'm going to take this foot, and I'm going to kind of bend it around to make the hip that he's sitting on. So you can kind of see his um, leg there. All right, and I'm going to kind of just gently stick that on. And if I turn it to the top now, you can kind of see how his leg is sitting there. Um, sorry, the light's not very good. There we go. You can kind of see how his leg is sitting there. Um, and then from there, I'm just going to work the seams together and kind of sculpt this leg around the back. and push it down. And one thing that I really want you to be careful about with the legs is um, clay is heavy, like we already said with the neck. And if you are sculpting a foot and trying to have your animal stand up on a foot, it's really going to be difficult to make it stand up very well. So I'm going to have my foot here so it almost looks like he's crouching down. And that foot is just going to add a little bit more stable um, area to the bottom of my clay. Another thing you need to take into account is your holes. If um, last year a couple kids put feet like right on the bottom here, here, and here, and it made it really difficult to get their fingers into their pitch holes again. So please, please make sure that you are thinking of your pitch holes when you are doing this so that you can easily access those pitch holes. Likewise, make sure you can easily access the mouthpiece as you go through um, the sculpting process. Now, I like how this leg is looking for me. Um, I like how smooth it is. I like the shape of it. So I'm going to kind of just clean up around here and I'm going to make a little seam. Now I've already cleaned up the seam from the leg, but I'm going to draw another seam on here with my popsicle stick to kind of make the seam of where the body and the leg meet a little more apparent. So I'm going to kind of clean that edge up. Now I want to have one more leg that I add, his front leg, and I'm going to add that like right here so it looks like his arm is coming out. Alright, so I'm going to take a little bit of scoring right here. And roll a little arm and stick it on the side and kind of bend it, sculpt it, shape it, blend these edges in so you can't see the original seam. Okay, and you can kind of see how his leg is sticking out there now. The whole point of this part of the project is to make something that looks three-dimensional. We really want it to have a three-dimensional look. It's going to sit on the shelf or something or wherever it's sitting when it's not being played and we want it to look nice. Okay, so if I turn this here, you can kind of see his foot sticking out and I'm going to um, part it here to get some little toes. Okay, and we're just ba doing the basic sculpting now. We'll, you, we'll get back to the fine point details later. But you can see how he's got now his bottom foot and his top foot. Notice that the top arm here is pretty close to the body. I haven't made it really long and far out because it might break that way. Likewise, the head, I'm still having fighting with this head because I'm having to lay it down and kind of rework it. Try not to bend things and rework things too much. So today what we've got is 
Um, adding extra clay on, you need to have at least two things added on. I'm going to choose the head, arms, arms, and I'm going to put a tail on. I'll make a second video so I can just fast forward through it for you. Um, but this is what we want. We want to have the fantasy creature really looking interesting by having a uh, interesting front, middle, and back section. So we've got those three pieces working together and we've got three dimensionality to our ocarina. Um, you're going to have to look out for your feet so that they're not spindly and hanging off the bottom. You're going to have to look out for your pitch holes so that those are um, still able to be reached and played. You're going to have to be careful of your mouth hole so that that can still be reached and played. And um, again, don't make your clay too thin or too heavy so that it's flopping over. There's a lot of stuff to think about. Um, and I'm going to stop my video there and I'll make another video with the other side so that we can look at that together and just do that in fast forward motion. Okay, so today working on sculpting the ocarina fantasy creature body.